Welcome guys. If you're new, thanks for checking me out and finding me in the bowels of the internet. But I, ho I do hope you enjoy this video because I've tried to piece together something which is a comparison video between lots of different brands that all do Seiko homages. And as I go through the review, you're going to hopefully learn a few new things because you would have likely have seen a lot of different reviews. And these watches, what I'm going to do is describe little things you need to find out with regards to tax when you import them to your country. It's not going to be too in-depth. It's just going to be what I've learned. And hopefully it helps some of you out. But this video is going to be the following categories. I'll be scoring it out of a maximum of 10 is the best and you could score zero and add all the points up at the end and the winner will be announced. It's as simple as that. And I'll discuss as well how some of them have been let down so badly in just one area. And that's interesting because some of these watches could go from being winning to losing just because of one category and one in particular you will definitely see. So the categories are as follows. It's going to be bezel action, crown, how well it threads in and the feel, the alignment of everything, uh, the overall fit and finish, the specification, uh, the loom quality, the strap quality as standard, the logo and the branding, then there's X factor, which is very subjective. And that's my little extra one in there I'm putting because it's down to how it makes me feel. That's your category. And that can mean the points will change. So you can change your points yourself down to that is simply how you feel when you look at and wear the watch. So bear that in mind. And lastly, bear in mind the cost. How does the value for money work out? I keep looking down because I've got all these notes everywhere and, and I'll total it all up and we'll see the results. So stick around, guys. After the intro, we'll get stuck in. So to quickly blast through the cost of these watches, so you have an idea of what to expect with the pricing. You should pay around £170, including import tax for this one. Same with this one. 170. This with my discount code is about 90, which is watch me with watches five at the checkout on steeldiveuk.com. I got this watch for free from Steel Dive. I mixture of borrow and occasionally get a few watches for free. And I always disc uh, disclose that in all my videos, whatever happens. This I got as a loan watch from Mark from Island Watches. Thank you, Mark. And this I bought for £312 from Creation Watches. And it's a uh, luck of the draw whether you pay uh, import duty or not it's really random some watches i get from them i don't pay anything and this was one of them so all in was 312 so that's the costs so now i'm going to start running through all the categories so we'll start with i've written it all down here it's all in list form so i've been very scientific or well, not really what we're going to do is start with bezel action so the turtle got 10 out of 10 the helm got zero this is why I cut my finger trying to turn it. I'll show you a photo as well. Zero. The Steel Dive gets eight out of 10. Islander gets six out of 10. And the Seiko gets seven out of 10. And I'll do a quick summary on each category as to why I've given it those scores. So this video isn't too long for you guys, but it's fair for me to give you a reason behind the score. So Turtle gets 10 out of 10, 120 click. The weight, the feel, the clicks are so well engineered and they feel fantastic. So the bezel action on this Sam Martin, as on any other Sam Martin I've tried, is very good. So if you're into your bezel actions, very good. I'm done at zero because it was so stiff and difficult to turn, I cut my finger. That's unacceptable. It gets zero. I've oiled it. And yes, I'll get hold of I'm Duller and complain, but that's something you'd have to do as well. So bear that in mind. You spent £170 on a watch. Do you want it to cut you? No. Is that acceptable? No. I don't hate this watch. It's just really disappointing because I love everything else. Moving on the steel dive. This had a slightly graunchy bezel when I got it from new, but as you can see, I've modded this watch and I'm going to discuss as I go through each section, uh, the scores for this watch is in its standard and modified form for the appropriate categories. So the final score will be as fair as possible. And I'll also break it down so it's good for modding. And so you can consider how much you can improve this watch, spending in a bit more money. So the bezel action on this, I gave uh, eight out of 10 because with a little bit of oil dripped into the bezel, it's now fantastic. It's 120 click, you can feel every click. It's light, it's, it's precise, and it all lines up. It's good. 
This is not bad, but it drops down to a six out of 10 because the bezel is difficult to turn. It's a bit too stiff. It's still got a positive action, but it's stiff to turn and the bezel action, so bezel itself is a bit slippery. You get one extra point, seven out of 10, for the Seiko because it's easier to turn than the Islander, but it still has a slightly muffled feel to it. It's not as nice or crisp or sweet feeling when you turn the bezel, but that's just my opinion. These all have 120 click unidirectional. So that's the bezel action. Now let's move on to the next category, which is the crown threading. I gave this six, 10, seven, seven, and seven. So start with the six. The reason why this is six, because this is difficult to get to bite and I've covered it in my full review of this watch. I think the crown stem is a touch too long. I'm not modding it because I want to sell this watch and I don't want to mess it, mess it up because I've never done that before. So that's an issue I noticed on this watch. So that gets six. This gets 10 out of 10 because it feels perfect. The unthreading, the winding action, the rethreading, it's so smooth and easy and it's a joy to use. This is okay, it gets seven, as do these all the others. And the reason why is because of the nature of the design of the crown guards it does impact how easy it is to turn them. But the threading action of getting these two on is slightly trickier than this one, but it balances out because this one has a smaller crown. So it, it could have got eight, but it drops down to seven because the crown's too small. So they average out at seven out of 10. So moving on to the next category, alignment. The scores are eight, and all these are 10. San Martin normally are the daddies for alignment. I'm gonna pick this up and show you. We've covered it before in my full review, but the alignment between the triangle at 12 and the chapter ring is perfect. But then we go into the 12 o'clock index. As you can see the line, it doesn't line up. And the 11 and the one o'clock indexes, indices are slightly too over to the right or clockwise. They don't line up as well as all the other indices. That's why that loses out a slightly uh, smaller amount. But the alignment and all the others is perfect. There's no misalignment at all. So they all get perfect scores. Fit and finish. We start with nine out of 10, 10, eight, nine, and 10. So the reason why this gets nine is because when I got it, it would have been perfect if it wasn't for the tiny alignment issue and there was a bit of fluff under the dial and that crown. Maybe I'll drop an extra point off uh, in hindsight because that that's three little issues, to be honest. So the finishing on that was not as good as it could be. The fit and finish on this, I've given 10 because the actual fit and finish is extremely good. But I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna knock a couple of points off now in hindsight because of that bezel. So to show you that, I've got my notepad here. This is gonna drop, I'm gonna take one off of that one. So it's gone from nine to eight. That one's going 10 down to eight as well because I'm knocking two points off for the finishing or the fit of that bezel is not right. So it's only fair. This gets eight. Alignment, fit and finish was good overall for the case specifically and everything else. There was no problems, no fluff, no dust, no wobbly bits, no misalignment. All I had to do was do a slight bit of um, honing of the, I'll show you, under here, here, this part here was a bit too sharp, but I took a very little bit gentle buff with a bit of uh, 240 grit sandpaper and that just took the edge off it and that was it. So I still scored it eight because it had that little issue regarding the sharp bit on the crown guards. This I've given nine out of 10. It's fantastic fit and finish, but for 300 bucks, it should be a 10 out of 10. And then the Seiko I've given 10 out of 10 because there's no alignment issues and everything else on it is absolutely perfect. I can't complain. So now we're gonna talk about the specification Nine, 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 ten, seven. These three score nine out of 10 because they've all got the Seiko NH35 movement. They've all got loom that's very good. They've all got ceramic bezel inserts. There's, the spec is the same effectively on these three. 
So this one scores a 10 because it comes as standard with a stainless steel solid end link bracelet. And it also has a milled clasp, drilled lugs, and an NH36 movement. So it scores 10 out of 10 for spec. And this scores seven. I'm not basing it just because it hasn't got ceramic and sapphire to decimate its um, score. And I'm not decimating it because it's got a, a rather rudimentary 7S26 movement, which doesn't have hacking or hand winding. The reason why I'm bumping it back up to seven from what would have been five is because this is an ISO rated dive watch. So it has, in terms of specification, something that's had significant investment to allow it to have that divers 200 on the dial. So that must be considered as an extra attribute for this watch to take it up again. Now I'm gonna show you a clip of the loom. I just did a 15 to 20 minute uh, recording of, of the loom of these watches. You can just get an idea of, this has BGW9, and the others all have C3. This has BGW9 in the bezel, and this has Lumibrite, which is Seiko's proprietary loom, which is still good today. And the scores I gave was 10, 8, 9, 9, 8. So the C3 in this one was ever so slightly le less longer lasting than these two, for some reason. Um, you'll see in the loom shop, I had the original dial, so it was fair to show you how good the loom was on the original dial of this watch, but the bezel is still what came with it on the steel dive. Next, we'll talk about the strap. So the strap, I scored 10, 7, 5, 10, 7. 10 out of 10, this rubber is so soft, so comfortable, really supple, good quality. This one scores a bit less. It got scored 7 because it feels stiffer, cheaper, more waxy texture, more um, uh, difficult to, to, to wrap around your wrist. This just feels really loose and floppy and just easy to wrap around your wrist. The standard bracelet on this I've given five and that's before it broke. When it broke, I'm giving it a zero. So bear in mind that could have really damaged the chances, but I'm, I'm trying to be fair here because the bracelets don't normally break on watches. It's, it's acceptable. So I'm giving it a middle of the road score as the standard bracelet. I'm not scoring it because it's on a 28 pound, incredibly good uh, Gekota bracelet as a mod upgrade. So I'm scoring it five for its standard bracelet. Moving on to this, this gets 10 out of 10 because the bracelet is a fantastic quality. You get solid end links, you get uh, drilled lugs, sorry, that's not part of the bracelet. Uh, really good clasp, it's milled, you get screw links and it's smooth, very f good fit and finish. There's no slop or play in it at all. Very good. And this one gets seven out of 10 because it's functional, but again, it's a bit stiff and doesn't feel as luxurious as the one on the San Martin. This next one, logo and brand, that's again, it's a bit subjective. So be fair on this one, really. Now the scores I've given is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That, that just came out that way, purely out of chance, honestly. Six, because San Martin, I don't understand the relevance of it with the a watch brand. Not quite sure what it means. It's a bit vague. They keep changing their logos. It's either printed in one font or it's uh, applied in this font or they've got a weird hexagonal shape, uh, whatever shape that is. Make your mind up, stick with it, get on with it. Heimdalla, weird name, but I like the sharks. So it scores the extra point there for seven. Steel dive. The logo's a bit weird, but the name Steel Dive sounds really cool, in my opinion. And that gets eight, nine for Island Watches, because the logo looks fantastic. It's really crisp. It's very contemporary and just sounds cool. And I like the fact it's from America. Very cool. And last one, 10 out of 10 for Seiko. They're a big super brand. They've been around for decades and they've got a lot of respect in the watch world. So we've come to the section where I'm going to discuss the X Factor. Now I'm breaking away from the camera down shot here, just so I can just have a quick chat about the whole X Factor thing is, a watch is very personal choice. Everything I'm discussing in this whole video is still only my opinion. Everyone has their own tastes, and I just wanna be clear that this is only my opinion. And I value that you are interested enough to watch this video to hear my opinion. Uh, but I'm trying to be as fair as possible, because I've had these watches hands-on, and I've played with them all enough to know what bothers me and what doesn't, and what I like and what I don't like. So this bit is just gonna be some nice shots of the watches outside in some more natural light settings. 
and I'll piece it together as a bit of a cinematic montage. So then that help you gauge as well if you just like the way a watch looks on, on someone like me on my wrist. So do enjoy this little segment because it will help you if you're looking at any of these watches, any of these brands, how well they can look on your wrist because it's very um, flat and ordinary looking at under studio lights sometimes or just on the internet. So I hope you enjoy this segment. Alrighty then guys, what I'm going to do is, I've just popped to the park, I've brought all the watches with me, I'm just going to do some wrist shots and show you them out in some natural light and then that's all going to account for the X Factor score I'm going to give, how it feels on wrist, it's comfortable etc etc and that will go towards its final score as well. Let's go take a look. I've given the scores of 89799, so 89799. This is my opinion entirely, so adjust your scores accordingly if you're watching this. But 8 for the San Martin, just because the colours are a little bit bland. I give an extra point here because I love green, and it looks awesome. It's a big chunky tuna can. 7 out of 10 is standard, but I've bumped this to a 10 because I've modded it to how I want it to look. So... I've made this X Factor better, so that's my doing. So bear that in mind. But seven out of 10, I thought it looked quite good, but I didn't like the rubber standard, sorry, the uh, standard steel. I didn't like the um, the overall look. It looked a little bit bland. So I just took it to the next level. This one, nine out of 10, because I love the orange. I just think it looks classy. It looks really interesting because of the colorway and good contrast between black and orange. Last one, nine out of ten for the seiko because it's a cult classic and i love cult classics i am a nostalgic guy it looks awesome and that's just me i like its history this is the one that has the history these don't so that's why this one scores equal to this one for x factor lastly value for money we all know value for money again is subjective because down to your budget what you value what you like Someone could say, this is the last Seiko SKX in existence in this condition, and it's £10,000. If you're an avid fan and you're obsessed with Seiko, it's value for money because it's the only one left in that quality. That's, that's the whole point I'm trying to make here is value for money is subjective, but I'm going to try and do this objectively. So I've given the scores of 8, 8, 10, 7 and 5. So 8 because... These two, sorry, these both scored eight because they're both 170 pounds. So they had to score less than Steel Dive, which is a standard less than 100. That's a big difference in price. And this is the lowest because it's seven out of 10 because it's nearly $300. So it's a lot more than these, but it justifies it with its spec and fit and finish. And this is only five out of 10 for value for money because it's over 300 pounds. And as we know, Specification wise, it's not as good as the others. So guys, we're at that point now where you're gonna to need to see the totals. The totals are as follows. If my maths is correct, the winner with 86 out of 100 is the Islander. Second place with 82 is the San Martin. Third place is the Steel Dive. Fourth place, is the Seiko 
and fifth place with 78 is Heimdallah. The reason why Heimdallah got decimated in the end, it would have come second or even joined first if it wasn't for that bezel. Look at my finger. Naughty. Steel Dive would have jumped, has jumped in my books from third to second just because I have improved aspects of it with a new dial and hands, which I think look nicer in my opinion, and a new bracelet. So that's me put my own personal touch on it. Has made me love it even more. But in standard form, it's in third place. I hope that's been clear, guys. So the winner, just to repeat, the gold medal is the Islander. But if we're going to exclude watches that are in the higher price category, the winner is Sam Martin, second place, Steel Dive, and last is Heimdallah. And all the Heimdallah fans out there, I know you're going to not be happy in the comments section. And you're going to tell me your Sea Shepherd is perfect. That's fantastic. But bear this in mind. I bought this watch with my own money and it's cut me. So that's why my opinion is fair. If your watch didn't cut you, happy days. Thanks for watching, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your comments. I'm sure I'm going to get loads for this one. And if you're not a subscriber already, please do. You get to see all my other content. And I've got some more videos coming up with some of these watches so you can get to learn more about them and see them in different contexts. So thanks again, guys. See you in the next one. Bye for now.